It's a story so unkind In the holy book we find And it tells how Jesus stood alone one day Also accused of their condemn Yet they found no fault in him The man who the scarlet Well, praise God. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad and thankful that Jesus was willing to drink his bitter cup. He prayed. He sought the Father, and he said, Father, if there's any other way, let this cup pass me by. But he says, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. It had to be. How come? Because if Jesus had not have died on the cross, we would not have had redemption. And if there would have been anything happened, if the devil could have talked everybody out of it, he would have never allowed it to happen. But you see, he couldn't do it because it was ordained that way. And I'm so glad that Jesus took my place. He paid a debt that he didn't know. I owed a debt that he couldn't pay. Jesus paid that debt for me. He gave his life's blood that I could have life instead of death. And so I praise God for his mercy for His grace. My, my, you think about it. I was lost and undone. On my way into eternity, I'm prepared to meet God. But Jesus passed by. And when He passed by, He saw me. And He stopped. And I'm so glad that He stopped and He saved me. He forgave me my sins, past, present, and future. Forgave me my sins. That's the reason that I can tell you today, God loves you unconditionally. God loves you unconditionally. There's no strings attached. 
when Jesus saves somebody, you're saved from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. That's right. There's nothing good that you've done. There's no way that you can earn it. There's no way that you can buy it. But he'll give it to you if you'll ask him for it. But you've got to ask. It's his, you see. He bought it and paid for it. My, he paid that debt that we couldn't pay. Why? Because we were lawbreakers. We break the law, and we still do. But I thank God for sanctification. That's an ongoing process. That's right. God doesn't talk about sinless saints. But he says, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But he gave us 1 John 1 and 9. He says, if you just confess, if you just confess, did you hear that? If you just confess your sin, then he'll forgive you. He's faithful. He's just. And he'll forgive you. But you see, a lot of times we won't ask. There's too much pride. That's right. There's too much pride. And we like to brag about, I keep the law. No, we don't. No, we don't. You take the moral laws of God, which is the Ten Commandments, minus number four, and there's no way that we keep them. I can't keep them. I'd like to. I'd like to pat myself on the back and say, I made it, but I know better. Why? Because he says, Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. How many gods do we have? How many times do we put something between us and God? Something we want to do or someplace we want to go, we put that before God. You broke the law. Whenever you break the law, that's dead. You say, well, I don't consider that breaking the law. Well, I'm sorry, honey. It doesn't make any difference whether you believe that's right or not. If you sin, he says, you're doomed to die. But Jesus died that we could have grace, that we could be saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And so I thank God today for that scarlet purple robe that Jesus wore. Yeah, those that ridiculed him and talked about him, they had said, crucify him, crucify him. He deserves it. He's the only one that ever lived that didn't deserve to be crucified. But they crucified him anyway. And so you see, yes, on the third day, he was resurrected. That's right, on the third day, there was a lot of witnesses. On the third day, he was resurrected. And then he, whenever he was ready to leave, he was around, I think, if I mistake not, around 40 days. And my, he was with his disciples. He was with a lot of other people. He was with Mary Magdalene. And so, you see, they all seen him. They knew that he was risen. And whenever he got ready to ascend, he led him out to the little hill. And as he lifted his hands... And he began to bless them. His feet began to leave the ground. He began to go upward. And whenever he began to ascend, the disciples turned around and looked, and there they seen two people, two men, standing in garments that were glittering and with light. And they said to him, Why stand here you're gazing up? That same Jesus that you see going there is one day coming back in like manner. How did he leave? He left in the clouds. How's he coming back? He's coming back in the clouds. Coming back to get his church. Take his church home. 
Well, you see, I'm glad that Jesus is able my to save to the uttermost if we will just allow him to. If we will just call upon him while there's time and an opportunity. Well, I didn't know I was going to get in all that, but I did. So I, I praise God this evening for all of those that have stood by us and helped us out. My, I kind of push us along a little bit once in a while, and, and we all need that. My, I encourage each other to look onward and upward towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You see, sometimes we look back and we kind of get discouraged and we wonder, what are we going to do? But you see, the Apostle Paul gave us an answer. He said, now there's one thing that I do. I forget those things that are behind. And I just keep pressing forward. Just keep pressing forward. You see, that's what he wants you to do. Press forward. Don't get discouraged. If you don't quit, God won't quit. <clears throat> I don't care who you are. I don't care how many times you fall down. If you get up, if you get up, shake yourself off. Go to God in prayer. God, sorry for my sins. Sorry that I, st I stumbled and fell. Sorry that I overstepped the divine boundary. You see, it's not God's fault that we do it. It's ours. We've got to claim responsibility, but I know that we live in a day and time that people don't like to accept responsibility. No, we want to blame somebody else for everything that happens. It's not my fault that I, I'm sick. I inherited it. Yeah, but we smoke all the dope we can get and we drink all the alcohol we can get and we take all the prescription drugs we can find and you see, it's not my fault that I'm in shape to me. You know something? If we would give the do if we would give God a half as much as what we give the doctors, we'd all feel better. What do you mean? Because the more God you've got, the better health you've got. That's right. The more God you've got, the better health you've got. Honey, I I'm a living I am a living proof. Why? Because in 1994, I shook so bad that I couldn't stand up here and hold my Bible. But, and people looked at me and said, Earl, you've got to quit preaching. You're preaching long enough. I said, no, that's the only thing that I can do. And see, I'm able to hold my Bible today. I praise God because God is true to his word. He says, I watch over my word to bring it to pass. Well, I better let these people sing. All right. God bless you is our prayer. We'll be back in a little bit. <clears throat> After I leave the world tonight Over the borderline Never again on earth to roam What will I leave behind? Leave behind, yes, leave behind What will I leave behind? 
you better sing a song. What a joy to know Jesus loves me. What a pride to leave heaven's throne. Just to bring my wandering soul to salvation. So that heaven could be my final home. It was my sin that needed redemption. It was my debt that he said I'll pay. Yes. It was my crown of thorn and my stripes he bore. Yes, it was my cross he carried and he died on that day. Save room for all my transgression. These wounds for my iniquity. See this man who gave it all for my pardon. Covered death to give me life eternally. It was my sin that needed redemption. It was my debt that he said I'll pay. It was my crown of thorns and my stripes he bore. Yes, it was my cross he carried and he died on that day. Yes, it was my crown of thorns and my stripes he bore. Yes, it was my cross he carried and he died on that day. Well, praise God. While I was sitting there, the Lord gave me a, a verse of Scripture. He says it rains on the just and the unjust just the same. You know, there's a lot of times that I stop and I look at people and I'm so amazed. Why? Well, because there's a certain bunch of people that believe that if you really serve God, you oughtn't to never be sick. You oughtn't to never have any problems. You ought to be able just to shout all the time. And then there's those people that believe that if you're a child of God, that you oughtn't to have anything. But because the less you've got, the more you've got you've got. But you know, a lot of these wise old tales, are, there's nothing to them. Why? Because somebody read me a piece of paper some time ago, and they, I began to read it, and it said, no, no, if you was never sick, how would you know that God was a healer? Think of that. Why? Because I went into the ministry back in around 70, 1970. Two years, I lost my voice. The doctors told me, Earl, you just as well hang it up because you'll probably never preach again. You've ruptured some blood vessels in your throat, in your voice box, and you might lose it. You might have to give it up. But you can see today, God healed me. Now, I'm not telling you that God heals everybody that gets sick, but God healed me. God knew what he was doing when he called me into the ministry. I didn't understand it. 
Why not? Because I was just an old farm boy. I loved the farm. I loved to work in the woods. That was my life. But you see, when he saved me, he called me into the ministry. I couldn't read like everybody else. I read like there was a period behind every word. But you can tell today, God taught me how to read. Why he done that sitting at the kitchen table? I would sit at night and I would read the Bible and I'd pray and I'd read out loud. And whenever I was doing that, God was doing two things in my heart, in my spirit. He said, well, what in the world was he doing? Well, first place, he was teaching me how to read. Second place, he was building faith. I had no idea about that. I didn't even know the scripture was in the Bible. You see, he gives us a measure of faith. But then it's our obligation to grow that faith. And how do we do that? He says, faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the Word of God. Whenever you sit and read the Word of God, if you read it out loud, you find out it means a lot more. Why? Because you're not only getting it in your head, you're getting it in your spirit. Because you're hearing that Word and it's getting down in your spirit. And whenever it gets down in your spirit, then you know that God can do certain things. You see, my wife and I was laying in bed one night. I don't know what time it was, but it was the wee hours of the morning. I had a lot of back problems. Doctor that I, were, that I went to, he said one day, Earl, don't know what keeps you out of a wheelchair. I said, I do. <laughs> you see, I know. It was God. As we were laying there in bed, there was something felt like it was just about the size of a marble was rolling right up through my temples on both sides of my head. And just as soon as it started, I reached up and I grabbed my head with both hands, laying there staring into the ceiling. And I said, God, if you're ready for me, I'm ready to come. Just like that, it was gone. But you see, with that, I knew God was a healer. I helped a lots and lots and lots of people that had headaches. People have called me many, many times on the phone. Said, Earl, I've got a headache. I would pray for him. I didn't I know I'm not a healer, but I know one. His name is Jesus. And can I tell you a little secret? It's because of what Jesus done on the cross of Calvary that we have these blessings. All of these are the blessings of God. You see, just because we're a child of God doesn't mean that everything's just going to be real smooth and easy. He said it rains on the just and the unjust, just the same. In 1984, I was taken to the hospital down at West and they put me in the intensive care unit and they told my wife that I'd had a massive heart attack. And I said, no, I didn't. They wired me up until I couldn't hardly move. I would just about drift off to sleep and come. somebody would come over and shake me and they'd say, Mr. Caton, are you okay? I'd look at them and I'd say I was almost 
what do you mean almost? I said, I was just almost asleep. And two, you come over and woke me up. You see, God healed me. I know God's a healer. How do I know? If I had never been sick, I wouldn't know that. But I know. I've prayed for a lot of people who had back problems. How do I know God's a healer? I've had back problems. I'm still able to get around. I, I just told somebody to see me. I said, I'm 75 years old. I thank God that I can still get out and mow my yard and hoe the garden. I thank God that I can still go over the hill and cut wood. You see, God is a good God. God is a healing God. And can I tell you something? This is the scripture that I would use if I'd have preached like I thought I was going to this evening. God is no respecter of person. What do you mean? I've had people look at me and will say, no, now, them people don't have no right to, for anybody to pray for them because they're not saved. You think just because you're not saved that God wants you to be miserable? He wants you to be crippled? He wants you to be sick? No, He don't. Why? A lot of times if we can see the goodness of God, then we'll repent of our sins and we'll start living for God. Wouldn't you write rather to, to be around somebody that was always wanting to help you instead of wanting to take the advantage of you? Wouldn't you? Honey, can I tell you the devil will take an advantage of you every time he gets a chance. He'll lie to you. He'll steal your health away from you. He'll rob you of your family. He'll steal your wife. I, my, and so you see, we need to serve God. Why? Because the more God you've got, the more joy, the more peace, the more understanding, the more greatness that you have. Because God's still God. And He still loves you. I don't care who you are. And I don't care what you've been into. I can't help it how deep you've dipped down. God still loves you. And if you'll call on Him, if you'll ask Him, he says, come and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Come and let us reason together, saith the Lord. He's talking to you. He's talking to somebody. Well, he's just talking through me, but he's talking to somebody. And he's saying today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow could be eternity. You see how much he loves you? How much that he cares? Well, it's prayer time this evening. Father, I thank you that you're a healing Jesus. That you reach out and you touch people. God, you said it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. I pray, Heavenly Father, for that one that's bedfast. For that one, God, that's got broken limbs not able to get around. God, that you would bless them and lift them up. Heavenly Father, that they would be able to go forth in the demonstrations of the Lord. God, save the lost. Heal the sick. Deliver those in bondage. And we'll thank you in the name of Jesus. God bless you our prayer. Until this time next week. <laughs>